Good morning. Welcome back. Right at this moment, if you're watching, I know that means that you're watching this video when it was recorded later, or you're watching later after it was recorded. So as always, we are waiting for a few moments for friends to join. And as always, if you're watching now, feel free to skip ahead a little bit until you see where we do the bow in, and that's the official beginning of class. But if you're watching through the beginning, then feel free to do a little warming up and getting ready before we could get class started. As you should always have your body warmed up and ready. I will say that at the beginning of every single class. You know, that's one of the things that as teachers, we often say the same things over and over again. Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> that's sort of how lessons work. If you hear something one time, have you learned it? Maybe, maybe you'll remember it. But when you hear something a bunch of times and you practice it a bunch of times, after a little while, it becomes something that you've learned. Right? You've learned it. That means it's inside of you. And sometimes later on when you need it, hey, Ari and Jack, good morning. Sometimes when you need it, it'll be there for you right? Something you've practiced and you've done enough times, or maybe you've heard from a teacher or even better, or at least just as good, that you've looked up and read about or practiced yourself. Woo. Then it becomes this powerful thing that's part of you. And it's there when you want it or when you need it. That's what practicing and training is all about. It's doing things or hearing things over and over again until they become part of you. Yeah. Sort of interesting to think of it that way, right? That things that I learn are part of me. Some of those things I've forgotten. <laughs> and that's what happens with things that you don't use very often. If you've learned something, by the way, keep swinging your arms and legs around and keep moving while we're waiting for other friends to join us. If you've learned something and you practiced it and worked really hard to remember it, it becomes part of you. But it actually works the other way too. If there's something that you've learned and remembered and worked really hard to do and then you stop practicing or you never use it, it can actually go away. Isn't that weird? It would be cool if it would just stay there forever. That would be great. But for most of us, if we don't practice something, we forget it. I've now, as somebody who's been doing martial arts for a long time, there are actually things that I've forgotten. Hey, Russell, there are things I've forgotten. I remember enough to know that I've forgotten them. <laughs> old moves maybe that a teacher taught me in a class or old lessons. Sometimes what's funny is with those things is that you can remember them almost accidentally. Something will remind you, oh yeah, I remember that thing. I forgot about that thing. And then poof, it pops back in. So that's why when we do martial arts or anything, we should really try to keep practicing all the different things we've learned. The cool thing is when you practice something a lot in the beginning and you make it part of you, once it's there, you don't have to practice as much to keep it there. Just a little bit of practice often enough and it will stay. And that's how you become an expert in something if you ever want to do that. Which brings me around to one more thing we'll talk about and we'll talk more at the end of class and that is setting a goal for yourself. If you wanted to become an expert in something, for example, you could make that a goal. I want to be an expert in teddy bears. I don't know. I just picked teddy bears. So how would you become an expert in teddy bears? Well, you'd have to read everything you could find about teddy bears and talk to people who knew about teddy bears and maybe go to the Build-A-Bear workshop and see what they do there. I'm just moving around while I'm talking. You keep doing the same thing. I'm just working on my legs now. So we'll talk about goal setting a little bit at the end of class. Oh, 
All right. Boy, Sensei did a good workout yesterday. Speaking of practicing, and I can feel my muscles are pretty tired and sore. Whew. How do your muscles feel? Are you ready for class today? I'll tell you what, let's get started. We'll bow in, we'll do our warm up, and then we'll get right to it. We're going to work on a lot of different things today. We're going to practice some blocking, we're going to practice some of our kicks, we're going to practice some of our stances. So we're going to put all of our basic moves together and work on a little bit of each of them. Okay, give you something to practice. So show me front position. Knowledge in the mind. Honesty in the heart. Strength in the body. All right, time for the warm up. So let's start out easy. Let's do 5 million jumping jacks. Ready? What do you mean you don't want to do 5 million jumping jacks? That would certainly warm us up, right? You think, you think that's too many? Okay, never mind. Five million is too many. You're right. Let's do, uh, let's do 20, right? 20 jumping jacks. Count them together. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now keep moving, all right? Give me a little bounce. Get your feet one in front of the other like your guarding stance. Get your hands up and bounce. And we're gonna bounce all around, right? Pretend there's a person right in front of you who's kind of boxing with you a little bit. So you're having a nice fun little sparring match with an imaginary person, or if you're there, like Ari and Jack, you're there together, you could face each other and you just sort of bounce around each other, right? Always stay in front of each other so you're looking right at each other, right? Or you can imagine a person right in front of you. That's what I've got. I've got an imaginary friend. My friend is a purple dragon. <laughs> Dancing around with my purple dragon. <sighs> Just bouncing around, keeping our hands up, practicing, right? Walking around and moving around with somebody who's trying to get behind us, someone who's trying to box with us. Keep them in front of you. <sighs> okay, take a break. <sighs> now lift your knees up really high, one at a time. I like this move a lot because it helps us practice, right, the thing we have to do for kicking. Knees up high, knees up high, knees up high. See if you can pull your knee all the way to your shoulder, right? <laughs> Sensei can't do it anymore. He's a lot older than you. <laughs> but remember what I said about practicing things? Keep going. That's even true with your body. There are moves you can do right now with your body. And if you keep practicing them, you will get better and better at them. And then someday you might get older like Sensei Dave is when you're all grown up and you'll still be able to do some of those moves. I have some moves as a grown up that I stopped practicing and now it's harder for me to do them. But you know what I'm doing now? I'm practicing those moves again because I want to be able to do them again. That's one of my goals. I set a goal to be able to do some moves that I can't do. Well, how do I get those? How do I achieve that goal? Did you say I have to practice? Wow, <laughs> you're a pretty good teacher if you said that. Can you move your knee in a big circle? Remember that move like this, big circle? Since we're going to be some of our kicks today, we have to make sure we move our legs in ways that are like our kicks to warm them up, right? So which kick is this like? See that big move? I've got my feet really far apart. I pick my foot up and I'm gonna lift it way over something big and I'm gonna go back and forth just like that. Keep your hands up while you do it. That's it, good. Just lifting that leg high. All right, let's see, what are some other kicking moves we have? What are the four basic kicks we've done? Front kick. I think I heard somebody say side kick. Did somebody say side kick? Who said roundhouse kick? Good, and then we did, the last one's hard, crescent kick, right? That's the big circling move like that. So front kick, side kick, roundhouse kick, crescent kick. Those four kicks, that's what we're gonna focus on today, okay, for our kicks. So let's make a side kick move, just a light one. Remember the side kick is turning your body a little sideways, lifting your knee up, just like it worked on, and then pushing out. That's it, up, out, back, down. Use your knee. In, out, back, down. In, out, back, just like that. 
How about two more? Ooh, one more. I'm just warming up, trying to get those muscles moving again. Um, remember in classes before, we've leaned on a chair or the wall. If it helps you and you want to, you can do that right now while you're doing the warm-ups. But you don't have to. You can just do it standing up. Up, out, back, down. Let's do five on this leg, okay? One. Just trying to do the move. Three. Four. I always find it helps if I look where I'm kicking. Five. Even though I want to look at you guys. All right, let's do the roundhouse kick. Now, remember, the roundhouse kick is different. We lift our knee up, but we also sort of lift our foot up like this. See that? Remember? Remember? Yeah, you remember. Like a dog next to a tree or a fire hydrant, right? Picking their leg up. All right, that's how we get the So we bring our leg up, and then we straighten our leg out, and then we put it down. Do you see how that's different from a side kick? Watch. Side kick is pulling your knee in like this and then pushing your foot straight away from you. The roundhouse kick is lifting your knee up like the dog and then making your knee straighten out and then bend again. Right? So make sure if you're watching your friend or another student or even Sensei Dave do that kick and they say, I'm doing a side kick and they do this, I hope you can recognize that they just did a roundhouse kick. I want you to be able to tell the difference. Practice it so it's part of you. It's right there in your brain. Let's do five nice warm-up roundhouse kicks, okay? So we lift like the dog. See how my knee's bent, and then swing and bend, and then put it back down, right? Do that again. Two, three, four, <laughs> and five, good. One way to help do that is when you go to lift your leg, when I lift my leg, I actually kind of pull it backwards to lift my knee up, right? In the side kick, I pull my leg in the front. For the roundhouse kick, I actually kind of pull it back. Here we go, five to that side. One, two, three, four, five. Whew, all right, not bad. So we did, we did the crescent kick by doing this move. Side kick, roundhouse kick, now we need to do you remember the fourth one? Front kick. So front kick is lifting our knee up high in front of us and then making the leg go straight, like that. Remember last week, we talked about some different kinds of front kicks. We won't worry about that today, so we're just warming up. Let's do five. One, two, three, four, one more, and then we'll switch legs. After this, I think I feel pretty warmed up. Two, three, four, five. Okay, Whew. keep your body moving. All right. So we said today we're going to work on all four of our basic moves. So there's four kinds of moves, four kinds. We just did some kicks. That's moving our feet around. What else can we do? Well, we can move our hands around. Two kinds of moves for our hands. One is striking moves where our hands are flying out and trying to hit something else. And the other one is blocking moves where things are coming at us and we're trying to get our arms in the way. Oh, hi, Schmutz. My cat just came over to say hi. All right, there's one more. So we've got kicks, strikes, blocks. And then the last one are how we stand or move with our feet. So stances. Right? If you remember a few weeks ago when we did combinations, if you take a stance and a block and a kick and a strike and all the different ones you know, mix them together, you can make combinations. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's do some stances next. Start from the feet. So get in a horse stance. Let me see that. Boom. Who's got a good one? You got a good one, Russell? It's pretty deep, right? Can you sink down nice and low? Remember, when you do the horse stance, your toes kind of turn a little bit out and your knees bend really deep, and you try to keep your body straight up. We don't bend forward like this. See, is this a horse stance? No. <laughs> my legs look kind of right because they're bent really low, but my body is bent forward. What you should try to do is keep your body nice and straight like this. Yeah, straight up and down. No bending forward. Let's see, so feet far apart, really far apart. Bend your knees until 
You're sitting on a very short, fat horse. Okay, now we're in a horse stance. That's horse, you know, like a horse. Now let's put our hands up and let's just practice some punches. So we'll do some striking moves while we do our stance. Can you do a front punch? Good. And now every time I say go, switch punches. Ready? Go. Go. Now I'm going from a guard position. That means my hands are out in front of me. Sometimes we do this from elbow position, right? Where I stick my arms where my elbows would go. Right there. But we'll do it from a guard today. Sink down low. Make those leg muscles work. Ugh. Are you doing this training? <laughs> are you trying to make this part of you? What are we making part of us right now? Some striking moves, and we're making our legs stronger. <laughs> Go for the punches. Ooh. Every time I punch, you punch. I wasn't punching then. See how I put my hand out and pull it back really fast? And I'm trying to stay down low in the horse stance. Okay, take a break. Shake your legs out. Let's do a different stance and a different move with our hands. If I, I'm going to turn a little sideways. If I take a giant step forward with one leg and then I bend that knee really far, like that, and make my back leg straight. Do you remember what we call this stance? It's pretty big, isn't it? It's not called the big stance. This is called the forward stance, right? I'm leaning forward like that. Whew. Now put your hands in that guard again. This time, let's do a blocking move. So if you take your arm out here and you swing in, in, that's the inside block, right? Inside block. So get in your forward stance. Pick one leg that you want in front. Let's do 10 blocks with one leg in front. Then we'll switch legs and we'll do a different one. So this is the inside block. Knee bent really far. Whew. Make that front leg work hard. Hold your hands up. So bring it out to the side and swing in. One. Yeah, now we do the other arm. I'll bring it up. Two. Three. Four. Five. Take your time. Six. Try to stay low in that stance, right? Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right. Now I'm going to switch legs. This time, let's do this block. See what I did different? That's the outward block or outside block. So my arm starts down here. Sometimes I think of this like my arm is a windshield wiper and my body is a windshield. And it goes whoop. Right? See that? So it's wiping the water off my windshield. That's just sideways. So the block is this move right there where you swing your arm out. Don't go too far. I didn't go all the way out here. I only went as far as, if you could see yourself in a mirror, as far as my arm being in front of my shoulder. Okay? Just a little to the outside of that. All right. So put your other leg in front into another forward stance. That's right. Sink low. Now, I put my hands in the guard, and this time I'm going to bring it across and go out. Here, let me face you for this. See it? This arm goes down, and it circles out. And then I just pull the other one back to the guard. Circle out. Let's do that 10 times. Ready? One. Take your time. Two. Three. Remember why we practice this? So it becomes part of us, right? Four. Sink low. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Whew. All right. Shake it out. Not bad. So we've done horse stance with an inside block, and we did forward stance with an outside block. Very cool. Are there more blocks we could do? Yeah. What other directions can we go? We went in, and we went out. Can you think of another direction? You sure? We can go up. We can go up. Okay. So let's do a different stance this time. Right? This is a tough stance. We're going to balance on one leg. We'll call that crane stance. Now I do the upward block while balancing on one leg. <laughs> Whoa. Let's do 10, and then we'll switch legs and balance on the other leg. So here's the upward block. My arm goes up like I'm doing a punch, and then all of a sudden it just flips over like this. Okay, now this is important, class. Let me get in close. 
when I do an upward block, I don't put it on top of my head like this. Can you see that? It's not on top of my head. It's actually in front of my head, right in front of my forehead. So if I turn and face you, see where that looks like? It's like I'm looking under my arm. I can see it right there. Not up here, but in front like that. Okay? Here we go. I'm going to back up. So crane stance, balance on one leg. Woohoo! Here we go. Upward block. One. See how it's right there? Hold your balance. Now switch arms. This one pulls down while this one goes up. Two. Three. Oop, oop, oop. Four. Try to balance. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Have to get my balance back. Nine. Ten. All right. Whew. Let's switch legs. We'll balance on the other leg. We want to do the upper block, or should we do the next one? Right, the downward block. Okay, so quick review. Downward block, your arm comes up across your body like this. I like to think that I'm taking this arm and touching the opposite shoulder, and then I swing down like that. And when you swing down, your elbow goes almost straight, but it stays a little bent. Don't go all the way straight like that. Boom, stop when it's a little bent. And don't go way out here. Keep it just outside of your body, right? Just past your body, okay? Like that windshield wiper again? It's the downward move that's the other part of the windshield wiper, like that. So get in the crane stance. Lift one leg up. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hold your hands on guard. So the downward block. Now, since you've got one knee up, you just swing a little above your knee so you don't hit it, right? One, two. See how I switch hands? Bring it across. Three. Bring it across. Four. Hold your balance. Five. Six. Seven. Hoo -hoo. Eight. Nine. Ten. Nice job. How was your balance? Did you stay up okay? What if you didn't? Does that mean something wrong with you? Of course not. It means that you can practice more to get better at it. Just like we said at the beginning, if I do something over and over and over again, after a while, it becomes part of me, and I want it to be part of me. By the way, those are all pretty good things, don't you think? Let me come on in for a second. Practicing my blocks, my kicks, my stances, my strikes. You could imagine if I made all of those part of my body, that my body remembers, that that's probably a pretty good thing, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Could you practice some things that weren't so good that might become part of your body that would your body would remember? Maybe. Remember I said that things that you do over and over again become a part of you, right? How about something like ice cream? Tastes pretty good, doesn't it? Well, if you eat ice cream over and over and over and over and over again, doesn't that ice cream kind of become part of you too? Do you think if you ate too much ice cream too many times, would that be a good thing for you or a bad thing for your body? Hmm. Hmm. It would taste good, wouldn't it? Yeah, be good for my tongue. <laughs> Might not be so good for your body. So when you're practicing things, you want to pick things that are good for your body and good for your brain to do so that those things become part of you. And you want to find the other things that maybe are really fun, but maybe not healthy, and do less of them. Just do them for special occasions, like eating ice cream. Because eating ice cream every day would be tasty, but probably not so good for the body. All right, come on back. All right, so we did some stances, we did some kicks, we did some blocks, we did some strikes. A little bit of everything today, huh? Let's play a little bit of a, a well, I call it a game. You could call this a drill. Something you do to practice something that you want to get better at, okay? So let's pick something we want to be better at. I'm going to pick kicks because Sensei Dave has a goal right now of making my legs stronger. Remember I got that new hip, and well, I got that operation done, and my hip feels pretty good, but I have to make it strong again. So I'm going to focus on my legs and do some leg moves. You can do some with me, okay? And I'm going to show you a new kick that wasn't part of the first four that we did. 
Oh, are you ready for this? So if you want to, grab a chair or something else that you can put your hands on for balance. Could be the wall, could be a couch, right? Anything that you can just put one hand on. I'm going to get my chair up. Here's my chair. So this kick is called back kick. <laughs> back kick. And I like back kick because it's a good exercise for my legs, right? So to do a back, well, I bet you can guess. What direction do you think a back kick goes? Right, it goes to the back. So to go to the back, well, two things I've got to do. One is I've actually got to look where my kick is going. So I actually have to turn my head a little bit to see what I'm kicking. So if there was something back there, I got to look, okay? And then the second thing I have to do is the right moves for the kick. So we always start with a lot of our kicks by lifting our knee up in the front, right? So even though I'm doing a back kick, I still pick my knee up in front of me. I know, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> it will in a second. So put your hands on a chair, get some balance, pick one knee up in front of you like this, and then look over your shoulder. Imagine there's something back there that you're aiming at. And I want you to take your heel, remember this part of your foot right here, and push it straight back. See my toes? Where are my toes pointing? Mm, they're pointing down, right. So to do the back kick, I pick my knee up in front. I've just got this chair here to help with my balance. I look over my shoulder, just kind of out of the corner of my eye. I don't have to turn all the way around like that because then I wouldn't be able to do a back kick, right? I lift my knee up, I look over my shoulder, kind of out of the corner of my eye. I'm going to see a spot back there, push my heel back, and then pull it back in front and then put it down, right? So you go one, two, three, four, just like that. Now, here's how we make it a drill. You pick something to aim at. So let's say, I always like my stuffed animal friends here. Here we go. The Minecraft piggy, okay? <laughs> so I'm not going to kick the pig. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it someplace so I can aim at it. So over here on the side, there's a little shelf. You might not be able to see it. I'm going to put my little pig over there on the shelf like that, okay? There's piggy on the shelf. Now, I'm not going to try to kick the pig. I'm just picking a spot that I can aim at. So here's what I have to do. I look over my shoulder. I see the pig out of the corner of my eye. I lift my knee up, and I aim at it. Whew. I push my foot back, pull it back, set it down. Now, if you don't have a pig, do you guys have pigs too? You can just pick a spot on the wall or maybe a, somebody else in your class, like your mom or dad. They can hold a hand up or a pillow or something, and you'll have something you can aim at. Okay, let's do five on one leg, five on the other. Here we go. So lift, look, kick, back and down, right? One, look over your shoulder. Two, three, four. Let's do two more. Three more. One, two, three, four. I'm counting the moves. One, two, three, four. I missed that time. I could see when I did that that I went a little higher than my pig. One more time. One, two, three, four. Four. That one was pretty much on. Okay, I'm going to do the other leg, but I'll turn around this way. I don't have a place to put the pig over there, so I'm going to imagine the pig over there. Back kicks to the pig. <laughs> Here we go. Remember, oh, something I forgot, friends. When you do the kick, look over the same shoulder as whatever leg is kicking. I hope you're already doing that. If not, we'll fix it this time. So I pick my leg up. I look over my shoulder. I pick a target back there push my heel at it, and then pull it back, set it down. Let's do five. One. One, two, three, four. Two. One, two, three, four. Three. One, two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. Were you looking that time? <laughs> five. One, two, three, and four. Nice job. Okay. Good work today, class. Let me come on in close. Whoop, I hope you can see me. So we started class by talking about something called a goal, right? Remember what a goal is? Well, if you play soccer, the goal is kicking a ball into the net. And that's a point. The goal is what everybody is trying to do. Everybody wants to kick the ball into the net. So a goal is anything that you want to make happen. You want to make the ball go into the net? Well, you got to kick it. 
get past all those other people trying to stop you and the goalie. Now, you can have goals for other things besides soccer, don't you think? Is there something that you would really want to happen that you could make happen if you tried? If you practiced and learned all of the things, let's say, that Sensei Dave is teaching you, and you make them part of yourself, and you're able to show them to me in class during a test, what happens? You get promoted to a new belt level. So in our martial arts class, we have some goals built in. You go through the belts, and someday maybe even as high as your black belt. But it doesn't even stop there. You could pick things that you want to do and then decide to say, I'm going to get that thing over there, and then you work towards it. But you can't do that if you don't start with the thing you want to reach for, the goal. So set a goal for yourself. It could be something small to start with. I want to be able to do 50 push-ups without stopping, Sensei Dave. That's a lot. If you think that's too many, you could say 20 or 25. Pick a goal that's good for you and then work towards it until you get it. All right, I'm going to step back. Did a great job today, everybody. Thanks for coming. And thanks for watching if you're watching this later. Today's Wednesday that means that later today at 4 o'clock, I'll be doing another class. And then about 4.45, I'll be coming on to do a little story time. So anybody who'd like to join in and hear a story, please come back. Until then, thanks to everybody. Oh, I forgot something. Silly me. <laughs> Front position. Knowledge in the mind. Honesty in the heart. Strength in the body. Bow. Thanks, everyone. See you later.